well, the concept of Horse's Mouth is really all about using the power of social networking, online social networking, for a real positive social purpose. So my vision behind it, when I started to see everything that was happening in the social web, was to create something that would actually be publicly meaningful. And so I've set it up as a social enterprise, which is a kind of business, but it's not a classic um, commercial business. It will have revenue streams and it does have a business model, but it's really there primarily to function as something that is in the public interest and is for the public good. From most of my career, I was running um, a successful advertising company, which I started up in 1993, Advertising Agency, which is now one of the top five. So I spent most of my career in the media world, in the advertising world, from um, the age of 21 to the age of 50, pretty much so. Um, and I started my advertising business at the age of about 34. So I've had two business startups in my life so far. I got the idea for Horses Mouth really because I was in media and I could see how media was changing. Uh, and coming to the end of a really great career in advertising, looking for some way to leverage all that great interest and knowledge about media and lots of clients and lots of companies and knowing what companies were interested in and what people were interested in and how people use media and watching to see how they use this new type of media. I could see that there was a whole focused change going to happen and that social media, peer-to-peer -peer kind of networks um, were going to be much more interesting, not necessarily more important, certainly equally important, but more interesting than the kind of conventional media that I'd spent the last 25 years in. It's almost the most basic part of the idea is to make Horses Mouth a safe, trusted place. So in order to do that, we had to do many different things that were built in right from the very start of the organisation and certainly from the very start of the construction and design of the site. So some of them are technological. Some of them have to do with how we build in an algorithm to the system that recognises a vast array of terms and behaviours that trigger moderation to a live human being so that the site becomes moderated by human beings ultimately. So some of it is a technological bit of kit that sits in the software. Um, some of it is also very much about policy, our policy of who, we, who and how we allow people in. So we do require people before they can be a mentor on the site to give us their mobile phone number which they don't just give us and we write it down, we actually use it to send them a four digit registration code which is unique to them which they have to enter at the time so we know that they possess that mobile phone at the time and that becomes traceable data and not everyone wants to give you their mobile phone number um, although uh, we find that about 20% of people don't and actually the remainder of people who are committed to becoming involved in the site are actually very happy to do that and they do realise that it's a security measure. For many people, I mean we have a lot of young people on the site, um, uh, sort of I think 55% currently are under 25. Um, and, you know, clearly they've, they've just come, you know, 16 to 25 year olds have been through very turbulent times and actually many of them really obviously have, you know, broken families, you know, issues with drinking, alcohol, drugs, uh, relationship problems, uh, educational choices. Um, so they're going through all this really high drama and quite a lot of them are, you know, clearly, and every, when you're a teenager, everything's a problem. So uh, express it like that. But the, when you hear what they're saying, they're actually turning it into, well, I got over this or I did that. So they turn it into a positive. It's a way, it's a kind of cathartic way for them to, um, in fact, to codify what they've learned, to actually write down what they've learned and what they think about what they've been through in a way that's helpful to other people. So it's actually a really great way to capture uh, positive outcomes from you know the challenges of life and we see young people really loving doing that they really enjoy doing it we did got a PR I mean we online PR and um, above the line PR we didn't do shamefully given my background um, advertising we can't really afford that so we're, we're just at a totally different level um, but we did uh, events and partnerships and PR and or I guess around the events there was some advertising and posters and things like that, but, but not what you would call an above-the-line campaign. I think that's in our future, but it hasn't yet been in our past. 
Um, I certainly believe in advertising, and if we could afford to do it, I know that if you can advertise on TV, you still have the fastest, it's still the fastest, biggest way to get lots of people involved and talking about something very quickly. Um, and I believe in that, but we're just not, not at that scale. And there are lots of other clever things we can do online, and particularly, as, as you know about online, it is rather a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's, you know, the more people there, the more links you have, the more people come to you, the more... So, in a way, it gets more... Your marketing becomes more efficient as your community grows. So, from now on, we'll be building the community with partners, so with partners who are interested in looking at particular areas. The challenge of Horses Mouth as a business, in as much as it is a business, it's a social enterprise, is that there is no turnkey solution for revenue. So we don't have an ad serving model. So we can't give it to an agency to just, you know, feed ads through to our pages. That, that, that's not how it works, which is actually um, makes it much more difficult to generate revenue, not because it's hard to convince people, but because each one is a job in itself. So each client, each partnership, has to be built from scratch with one-to-one -one meetings, so it takes longer time. So it, 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 it's not a turnkey model of, of, um, of, of business, it's more of a single partnership by partnership model and we're building those as we go along. I think at the beginning we definitely had to go out and, and talk to people about it because, partly because it was two years ago now, we've only been going for a year as a live site, but we've been talking to people about the idea for about two years. And in the first, last year, and even at the end of the previous year when it was just an idea, um, you can't imagine how different attitudes were to the social web even. I mean, it just was less mainstream. It was much more of an outsider phenomenon to organizations and companies. It was something young people did or something you did at home or something you did but you weren't supposed to do or something that was trivial. And actually, that, it took a very long time, and I would say only now, only in the last six months, has that perception finally disappeared? Well, it hasn't disappeared, but it's going away. I mean, everyone asks the question about how do you know it's good advice and who's to say it's good advice and all of that. And I think that that's one of the, the, great, um, the, the great kind of problems that people, if you come from a conventional way of thinking about mentoring and advice giving, you inevitably have this big barrier that says, but who says it's good advice? They're not professionally qualified. But actually, if you come from the other side that says the web is where people meet and talk, um, then and you say, that's going to happen anyway, here's a place where we make that safe and we manage it to quite a large extent, but people are still meeting and talking, and it still is person to person, and it still is human, and people know that it's just one human being to another, and that's the attraction of it, and people are smart enough to take it with a pinch of salt because it is just that. But I do believe that in the context of it being unprofessional advice, we actually have a lot of professionals on the site who are actually giving professionalised advice, but not as professionals, and people are, you know, there's no, there's no transaction going on. Um, but I do think that people do tend to give um, thoughtful advice in the context of horse's mouth. I think they think carefully. They do know that they are putting a hat on that, that, that is a trusted hat. You know, if someone is called a mentor, they're going to rise to that challenge. For one thing, all the published content is moderated personally. So every single profile goes through human moderation and it has to have a certain it has to be of a certain standard of, you know, it can't be too flippant, it has to be coherent, it has to contain meaningful information, um, uh, so, and it has to be reasonably literate. We don't, ha we don't say it has to be highly literate because some kids are not highly literate and they're not highly literate online particularly. They look like they're not literate, they're probably just using patois and text language, so to us it looks illiterate, but it's probably not to them. So. Um, so uh, human beings moderate every published profile, every story that's published, everything that's published to read on the site is moderated by a human being. That's quite a large amount of content. What, what we also moderate is the messaging between people that, we, that the, is not published on the site, it's between two individuals. It goes through private messaging on the site. And that, about 30% of that gets moderated through this algorithm in the system that recognises terms. So about 30% of the content is triggered 
to be humanly moderated, and that's how that works. The rest, the 60% of content hasn't triggered moderation, means it doesn't contain any terms, words, phrases, and there's a very wide range that would require us to look at it so that we assume it's safe, which it is. So, and of that 30% that gets moderated, we reject about 10%.